this really has a lot of potential. So to me, this is the best risk reward play right now. I bought snow yesterday and uh, I'll probably add to that on the pullback today. So these are the kind of things where um, I look at the opening morning, uh, you know, action and we're pulling back thousand down about 300, what have you. And so I feel like now the markets have gotten some support. They've, they've gone up dramatically in the two days. They need to pull back. But I think, you know, you can look at the, the, the relatively stronger things and use this pullback to uh, consolidate or even establish further positions. So this is Snowflake. Uh, I think we started watching this last week. And, you know, Snowflake has been going, kind of going higher. We've had this cadence of, you know, higher lows. So even though this is where the markets trap you, you see this and you go, well, this is a double top. Uh, you know, we see this all the time, but some tops are made, you know, very differently. You can make a top and then you have lower lows. This is a, this is a thing where, you know, you see this top, but you have this cadence of higher lows. Now, look, if we had rolled over and started going this way, then uh, one thing, but, um, you know, the market does trap you and, uh, it does so in many ways. So you have to decide, is this the bottom or is this the top? And since we have a cadence of still higher lows that have yet to be taken out, I'm still assuming the path of least resistance is higher. So you can see that in the preceding day, right along this uh, support line, we had this key reversal and then markets broke out very robustly yesterday. Now you're getting a pullback. You know, you can open two, three dollars lower now, when something closes on the low, you know, on the on the high like this, I mean, you typically don't open and, you know, go down, you know, that that doesn't look like very realistic to me. So typically, when you open lower, you usually got to go back to at least the unchanged. So I, you know, I'm going to, if this holds this $3 lower thing, I'm going to keep buying into a dip into snowflake and assume that, you know, we're going to retest these highs. What if you're short something like, say, restoration hardware? I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with that because that's the thing. You know, you see, this is, you know, it looks like a short covering rally here. It has been, but these short covering rallies can be profound. Now, I have seen a sneaky thing in restoration hardware embedded all the way here is this, what looks like a bottom. So, you know, now you're at these areas, so I would not wrangle with this at all. I mean, you could have a blitzkrieg in this thing. You know, sometimes you get into these things and uh, restoration hardware is not something you want to be on the other side of. It's got a very high beta, meaning that its correlation with the market is, you know, very high. It goes up. Uh, you know, at, at a quantum magnitude of the underlying index. So you do not want to mess with this and be on the wrong side. So I would not, sh I mean, you know, that's the thing, you know, it's like at some point, if you're in something, you should visually be able to draw a story and say, okay, can I see this going that way? <clears throat> it may be, but it needs some kind of price action to like this, to kind of point that, you know, this energy is going to stop and, and, and I don't see that. And I, I don't want to, you know, experiment that it is just going to, you know, end today and then be all right. Uh, Cause it could just, you know, keep going and then do this. So, um, you know, and, and this has always looked to me like a funky bottom. And now we have this little triple bottom here. So no, just the opposite. This is actually looking like, it's a buy. You know, this is, you know, just put on this funky bottom. So we, we're in this trading channel. 
bang both sides of it, but uh, yeah, I feel like this thing wants to go to 300 again, and then, you know, that way. This looks like a bottom to me. It always has through all of this. This is why, you know, I've been like, what do you do with this thing? If I was short, I would not, I would not want to be short. One of the things I was looking at was Twilio. Uh, it seems to, you know, been kind of stopped going down for the last couple of weeks. So you can see that this thing has stopped going down. This may be an interesting one. Um, I've been looking at this for a while. And, you know, you could just get these monster beach ball uh, short covering things. You know, this thing has just been going down, 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 down in a slow drip. And, you know, built up a short inch and you could just get one of these. You can see how it just goes down and then hits an air pocket. So it's entirely possible. All of these stocks, you know, just hit an air pocket. So Twilio is something that, uh, you know, starts taking out this downtrend line, which is not too far away. You kind of get this bear trap condition where anybody who's chased these lows, you know, you could have a substantial uh, rebound. So that's the thing, I look at something like this and it, you know, it's, it's, it's try to go down, try to go down, try to go down, try to go down, can't go down, it's gonna go up. Um, not a classic buy formation here, but, um, you know, and I was, I think I said this like many weeks ago, I felt in here that this was a, a low area. Um, again, if you look at all of these lows, they kind of, um, they all connect down here. Look at that. I mean, look at that. So. Uh, I mean, does it mean that it can't go down and hit there again? And this is not, see, I mean, I kind of look at things and go, you know, is this something that is a sustainable, something that's going to lead to something sustainable? But, you know, you could just have something that comes back here. I mean, it just, you know, uh, so I wouldn't mess with this thing. I wouldn't be short, it, put it that way, whether it goes up or what have you. Um, you know, I just think that, you know, we've, we're just trundling along this major low and you, you're, you know, if something can't go lower, uh, it's going to do the other thing. So uh, I think there is a high possibility that it could, uh, could go higher here. I mean, it's a horrible looking chart. It's not something that uh, I, I would want to buy, but then Netflix kind of looks like the same thing. And Netflix is, you know, found traction in, in, in here, even though the, the big chart looks bad, you know, Netflix also stopped going down. And then, you know, it's just started to find a way to incrementally go higher. So these charts are now in pretty complex sequences. So you can see, so, you know, on a relative basis, you know, I guess Adobe has, but yeah. You know, and then it's, so it stopped going down here. And if something stopped going down, it's going to do the other thing. And you can see now that we're forming this consolidation. It looks like it, it wants to push higher again. So, this, you know, that's kind of that, what could happen, you know, this is what Adobe looks like at the bottom, something stops going down and then you get this, you know, explosion the other way. So to me, this is the best risk reward play right now, Schlumberger. So you're knocking on the door again. I don't know if you kick the door open. Again, I'm just looking for this thing to hang out at 40 for, you know, a couple of days. And, uh, you know, this looks huge. This looks like when I look at this and I, I kind of, so here on this sequence, you can see the reverse triangle here, but this whole thing looks like now a bottom, which means that this really has a lot of potential. This feels like it's gonna go and make a new high. So you can see, yeah, 45, it's 1.3 million. 1.3 million dollars short. So pop out a profit for 118,000 there. So you can see how this is going crazy now. You can see how the market just going nuts. I bet like a, a million six on this position. I'm showing right now $23,000 gain.